Welcome to Albrick Road, I am Jordan, and today I am doing a video on Tulsi Gabbard fighting jihadists, or you know, her friends are fighting jihadists in Africa, and uh, people probably shouldn't like this, and I'm hoping people don't like it. That makes sense. Hopefully people have a problem with that. Uh, before I get started, don't forget to share support, hopefully donate to Devin's Journey to Recovery, to Helping Victims of AFRICOM. Tulsi, pay attention to that one. Uh, Cohen Daly, the Australian boy, boy, also help out some content creators. Stevie, aka Redneck Economics, Sleepy J, Buy My Coffee, and Ali Alexandra. All links are in the description box. Do it. Help. Share, support, donate. Do it now. All right. So during the 2015, 2016-ish, or no, sorry, during the 2020 uh, run, right, 2019, 2020 run in the Democratic uh, primaries, Tulsi Gabbard was definitely looked at as a anti-war uh, progressive, right? That was like her main thing. Not that I would call her anti-war, it's, it's more like that's the perception that it's, it seems like that's what I was getting from people. And I definitely looked at her as like a person who meant well, like a Bernie Sanders, same thing with him. Like, oh, I think they mean well. And I don't think they're good enough for any type of power position where they can govern over people. But I definitely looked at him like, hey, I could still see people that mean well diving into politics and trying to make things better in this in this direction. I understand it. A lot of people got on me for not like, you know, why aren't you? Well, who are you voting for then? Aren't you going to vote for Bernie? No. Aren't you going to vote for Tulsi? No. What the fuck, man? Like, hey, guys, I'm just giving my assessment from over here. Doesn't mean, like, I hate that old, that old fucking statement where, if, like, if you don't vote, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be allowed to talk about the candidates or talk about the political race. Fuck that. I'm giving my opinions on this. And let me just say this right now. I would definitely vote if there was a candidate good enough. And I have pretty high expectations of a candidate. Uh, all right. So, yeah, Tulsi was very liked, especially amongst the people that, you know, I usually pay more attention to in regards to, like, news and information and shit like that. The indie media scene, right? Even though the, the pop YouTube indie media scene did not like her at all, but, like, other than, like, Dor and some other people, but, you know, a lot of people like Tulsi. They looked at her as, like, a countercultural type of thing, standing in the face of the bullshit, here we go again, fucking politicians, right? Uh, but there was definitely some glaring flaws in some of the ideas she spoke to, she's, you know, spoken about, and also certain behaviors that I noticed that, you know, people would get upset with me for saying it. Uh, Tulsi, Tulsi fans are strong out here, but they will go at you. But, uh, all right, let, let's go through this because this should not be acceptable to anyone. And I would say, especially a Tulsi supporter, considering why you like her in the first place, right? For the anti-war messages, the standing, the standing in the face, like actually saying the fucking information that you guys talk about all day, right? The fucking uh, funding rebels in Syria thing. That's like the big one, right? Oh, the CIA funds Al Qaeda in Syria. Like, when have you heard a politician do that on fucking national TV? That's crazy. And then heard also fucking, you know, scalping motherfuckers in the debates. Not Joe Biden, though. <laughs> so, all right, let's go over this. Uh, I'm going to read them first, and then I'm going to play the video. All right, so it says, Aloha! You haven't heard much from me lately, as I've been gone for the last four months on, a on an active duty tour and deployment to Africa as a civil affairs officer supporting, supporting a special forces mission to go after Al-Qaeda-affiliated jihadists. It was truly my honor to work continued so right that you should already be looking at this a little funny right like you guys 
who support Tulsi, right? At least the ones I've gotten to know, it seems like they understand what's being what's what's meant by something like special forces, right? Like we saw this in the debate, in the debates, right? And people were uh, criticizing Joe Biden for saying, "No, we're gonna get our troops out, but we're gonna leave you know a couple thousand special forces behind." And people were like, "That's you leaving troops in, isn't it?" So, right? Your standards should hold up the same, right? Even if it's Tulsi. Aloha, queen. <laughs> All right, let me continue here to number two. With incredible, hopefully you can see this. Hope I'm not fucking that up. All right, you can see it. Number two, uh, fuck. My honor to work with incredible patriots. Experienced, focused warriors with an unwavering commitment to serve our country. We should never forget that no matter the decisions made by politicians slash careerists in the Pentagon, it is our men and women in uniform who selflessly and quietly defend the safety, security, and freedom of our country every single day. I haven't posted much since I was gone because I asked not to talk about my going overseas until my mission was complete. Al-Qaeda is very active where we were, and as someone who has a high profile, I would have been a prime target for the enemy. Putting my life and the lives of my fellow service members and our mission in greater danger. I look forward to discussing the foreign and domestic issues and challenges facing our country. I did that thing where I'm like thinking as I'm reading, and I'm like, what did I just say? Like, I don't even know what I just said out loud. But, uh, because <laughs> there's so much in here. You're seeing, right, put a mask on the profile, right, and just say it's question mark. It's John Doe or Jane Doe, right? And, but you know that they're some sort of high-profile person, right? They have a check mark. But you don't know the name. You don't know who it is. And then you see statements like this. Where do we typically see words like, and our incredible patriots, and right and uh safety security and freedom of our country every single day that's what these patriots are doing uh my mission like these little buzzwords that normally would be looked at funny right and i'm not gonna lie when tulsi was running in the in the primary i like I don't want to say gave her passes, but I like I looked at it from like the possibility, like okay, does this person mean well? If I think she means well, then I can still I can see someone saying certain words. Not not that she was really using these type of words. I think she was like it seemed like she was saying like oh no no when these guys use buzzwords over here, they're doing it to gain favor. When I'm saying it, I really mean like this is the real definition of it, right? Kind of like when Kyle Kalinske says, I'm a centrist, right? Typically, that means something negative in the political lefty YouTube, right? But he means like, no, 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 I actually represent the average person. That's what I mean by centrist. Like Bernie's, like, I think he said about Bernie Sanders, like, that's Bernie's ideas. Or no, he, yeah, he was talking about Bernie Sanders, not himself. He's like, oh, Bernie's ideas are like, he's, he's like a centrist. Like, he's like a real centrist. So I think, so I kind of looked at it somewhat like that. But obviously the answer was still no as far as her running because I was aware of other things beyond the, the shit she says out loud, you know, in modern times during the campaign and shit like that. Uh, let's go ahead and play this video and then I'm going to give more of a detailed thingy. Right, here Patriots. we go. We'll everyone. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. Uh, you haven't heard much from me lately. I've been gone for the last four months serving on an active duty tour and deployment to Africa as a civil affairs officer. I was so it's basically her just repeating what was said, but I'll just play it anyways. Supporting a special forces mission to go after Al-Qaeda affiliated jihadists. Now, every single day, it was truly my honor to work with incredible patriots, experienced, focused warriors with an unwavering commitment to serve our country. We should never forget that, you know, no matter the decisions that the politicians make or the careerists in the Pentagon make, 
It is our men and women in uniform who selflessly and quietly defend the safety, security, and freedom of our country every day. But we've heard you talk about the war on terror, right? And you put it in the context of they're doing regime change wars. They're not actually, they're not actually, you know, fighting for freedoms for us. It doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. I need to go to Africa to fight for your freedom here. It doesn't really make sense, right? And that's why people, I think a lot of people, why a lot of people moved towards Tulsi Gabbard was because, like, no, no, no wait a minute. That doesn't make sense in regards to, like, the, the, the buzzwords, the fighting for our freedoms by whatever, killing Saddam Hussein. It does, like, doesn't add up. And finally, someone's here to break that mold to say, no, they're not fighting for your freedoms. They're fighting for whatever, resources, regime change, on and on and so forth. Uh, that's kind of her claim to fame. Right, let's, by the way, it's probably her sister tweeting the words out, and then she just recorded a video or something. Ben. Now, I haven't posted much since I was gone because I was asked not to talk about my going overseas until my mission was complete. Al-Qaeda is very active where we were, and as someone who has a high profile, I would have been a prime target for the enemy. Now, well, that's probably accurate, if I had to guess. That's probably accurate. Uh, but, you know, you should, like, Tulsi should be someone that understands that, like, hey, out of these terrorist groups, terrorist groups, or whatever, because I do believe there's, there's definitely going to be extremists, I think, in all these many places around the world. But how do they come about? How do they get resources to even do any of this stuff? Right? How are they, like, they, they're not some fucking super organization or whatever the fuck. How do they, how do they begin? How do they get access to certain weapons or money or on and so forth? Like, wait a minute, you ran talking about that, though. Like, hey, we're funding rebels in Syria that end up giving money and aid and weapons and all that shit. Either they are the extremist groups or they're giving them to these other groups. Like, you kind of, that's your claim to fame in the progressive YouTube sphere. It's that you talk about the CIA funding these groups. And now you're going to this other country. Like, what was it? Was it just Syria that was happening in? There's no logical way I could think. Like, you would just... Oh, no. It would, that was only in Syria. That's, a, that's the only place. Because Syria is so fucking important. As opposed to all the... Especially, like, a place like Africa. These countries in Africa who have a shit ton of more resources. Right? So, once again, logic not adding up. It, that doesn't make sense. Like, you are aware of this, Tulsi Gabbard. You ran on this. But let's continue. Putting my life and the lives of my fellow service members and our mission in greater danger. Now I look forward. What would the mission be? Right, like certain words like... Uh, Special forces, right? Like, what, what is that exactly? Like, what are they doing there? Are you saying they're there just to fight extremists or whatever the fuck? But then again, once again, it begs the question, like, who, how did they come about in the first place? That's what I thought your whole thing was. Like, I thought, I thought that was the point of it. To say, hey, we don't need to do these regime change wars because we're doing this right here. Like, this is creating the thing, the problems in the first place. Right, as far as extremist groups. Granted, I do, she was saying things like uh, that she'd be okay going after extremist groups and the whole notion of, you know, Wahhabi, Salafist, Islam, or whatever the fuck. Right? I took those as like, like oh, I don't mind her saying that because that's kind of like, like, I don't mind looking at that ideology or whatever. Right? I think a lot of bad faith actors were just going with, see, look, she supports George Bush's war on terror and blah, 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 blah. I took it as, like, oh, I have no problem 
someone actually calling this out, like, hey, this ideology is what these extremist groups claim to follow. And it's also a similar I- ideology to these Saudi Arabian guys who we, the U.S., support. Like, huh, maybe we can put pieces together about it. So it made sense to me at the time. This, though, because she said something recently, recently right? About, uh, it's all, it's ideology. That's what's creating these groups and stuff like that. And it's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, here's more. ...to discussing the foreign and domestic issues and challenges that we're facing in our country. No, I'm not watching it again. Now, when Tulsi was running, there was plenty of information I knew about in regards to her that were, I would say, alarming, something to pay attention to. But at the same time, these are things that are prior to her, like I... I was looking at her like, hey, maybe this person means well. And then maybe this trip to Syria like, was an eye-opener to be like, oh, fuck, they were lying to me the whole time about all this shit. Now I'm going to try to expose all of it. And it seemed like that's what she was doing in a way. But there is some past things she said that have, walked, that have uh, worked like right in line with certain Joe Biden foreign policy ideas. It's like kind of spooky, actually, if you look at it. I'm going to play a couple of them. Or one of them. Yeah. So this is Tulsi Gabbard from 2015, right before the Syria trip. And this was not really talked about at all in regards to supporters of her. You know, this was not talked about, even though this was around, this existed. But it wasn't talked about. And you know, I'll, I'll let her explain the idea in regards to what she considered like doing or what she thought was the best way forward in regards to the whole mess in Iraq. Here we go. Well, I think it's important, first of all, to operate in the world that actually exists, not the world that we wished existed. Uh, again, if we look at the policies that have been continued from the Bush administration through the Obama administration, the reality is, Wolf, that they're just not working. And this is why we have to look at what I believe is our only hope towards getting rid of ISIS stronghold in Iraq, and that is some sort of a three-state solution. Exactly how it's configured would have to be determined, uh, but empowering each of the three uh, ethnic and sectarian groups in Iraq so that they're responsible for their own governance and their own security will create a situation that will expel ISIS from Iraq and defeat them. So we're going to take Iraq, a country that isn't ours, and we're going to split them up into, what would it be, two partitions? It split them up into three pieces, and it's all based on ideology? That's straight from the Council on Foreign Relations. Like, straight from the... And uh, one of the guys who uh, was basically proposing that? Oh. Here's the bottom line. The same thing was said when we were pushing the settlement that we had called the Dayton Accords in, in uh, uh, Bosnia. What happened? Once there's an overall agreement, and my... My, my uh, Kurdish friend knows I don't have to kill him before he kills me, a Sunni, because there's been an overall agreement. What's happened? There haven't been that kind of thing happening in those same cities, Sarajevo, Tuzla, uh, all those places that were mixed populations. Once there's an overall agreement, it stops. The last point I'll make, look, folks, it's real simple. The simple proposition here is you're not going to be able to govern this country from the center, period. There's already four and a half million people that have fled their regions, and the only way you're going to do it is give people local control over their local regions, their local security within a loosely federated republic, or we're never going to get out of there without leaving chaos behind. Basically, let's split Iraq into ideological you know, sections, you know, like from the outside, essentially, right? Because 
even though they're not technically forcing them, but like, come on. The U.S.'s hand weighing on the scale of whatever idea is going to, it, it's probably likely that it's going to move in that direction, right? They're going to tip the scales in whatever direction they want it to go. When I say U.S., I mean these weirdos in government, not us. <laughs> we don't get to do shit. So, yeah. So, yeah. Here's my, I guess, the closing thing for this. I've been talking about this for a while now. Like, this idea of team playing, fanboying, fangirling, on and on and so forth. I talked about how, you know, how dangerous that could be. 100% could be. In this realm, especially. The realm of politics. And what is politics really supposed to be? It's, hey, how do we make the world better? What's the most efficient way? And what's the most moral way? That's what political discussion seems to be like. That's what it seems to at least be like hinting at, right? As like, that's, that's the whole point of this. You can't have fans when it comes to that. When someone fucks up, it needs to be looked at, called out either by themselves or by onlookers. Because if things, if things turn into a fanboying situation to where it's no matter, what, no matter what's being said, we're going to follow this person, they could say some outlandish fucking shit and just get you to go along with it. If people look at these statements here and don't say, well, what the fuck is this? Like, really explain what you're doing there, what, you, what you're saying the troops are doing there, on and on. So, like, be very, like, be much more detailed because this is not enough to just go on. Well, it's Tulsi, so you just let it go. She, she's going to do the right thing. Just step back. Didn't we hear that with Bernie in regards to Julian Assange? Has he even said the fucking name? Since he's got, like, since the whole election thing passed and all that. Like, Bernie, you're not going to run again, right? You're not going to run for president again. So you have nothing to lose, really. Fucking let it fly. But it's Bernie, you know, one day. <laughs> it's going to be his last breath on his deathbed or something? Come on. So, I'm still, like... I'm not going to say that Tulsi Gabbard is a creeper, like is a creeper. Like this is like, she's doing something various on purpose and malicious and all that stuff. But my God, the, the naivete is fucking it, it, like, if she's just being naive, that's a major, major red flag. And you should, people should be like, Hey, since you're out of the, you're not a politician really anymore. Like, Hey, you should learn some shit though. Like really learn some shit. And maybe she might even run again after that, like from just like just from learning, like, hey, I could do be I could do a better uh, a better campaign this time because I have more information. I'm armed with more information. I mean, I, I, this is there was something I was saying. Once again, I took heed for it. Was what uh, when she went on Rogan's podcast with Jocko Willink, and I'm like, are you li are you sitting right next to this fucking meathead and letting him do like just say this? About the mission, we find the mission, we define the mission, we we carry out the the mission, and then that's what this this Jocko Willink guy was sounding like. And I'm like, dude, you're right there. Are you gonna tell him like, hey? In a lot of these scenarios, like, fuck, it seems like the U.S. did some creepy shit in regards to ki maybe kickstarting the war or kickstarting someone else's war or even dare I say, in a way, like purposely putting troops in harm's way for some other thing that has nothing to do with freedom or patriotism or any of that shit. Like, he's right there. Tell him. And you're on Rogan's podcast. You have the fucking world watching. Not the world, but a shit ton of people. Not only could you have informed him, but also the whole audience could see that you're informing him, right? If he's the go army, go guy, and then you kind of stop him in his tracks to where he doesn't really have much to say as a counter and you do it in front of Rogan's audience and all of a sudden it's like oh, maybe I should look into this or 
Ah, oh, fuck. Who's this Tulsi Gabbard person? Or, or whatever. You playing nice and looking past all the shit Jocko Willink was saying probably hurt you more than, like, straight up, like, you know, blood sport screaming at him or whatever. Which is not what I'm saying to do. I'm just saying. The blood sport screaming at him probably would have got more traction than just being nice. And like, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, you believe what you believe and I believe what I believe. Meanwhile, you're talking about dead bodies, essentially. Right? That's kind of a topic where it's like, sorry, I can't just let that slide. Not with this giant audience and you fucking, you know, go army go type stuff. All right. That's it. I'm sure plenty of you guys have uh, other things that you can bring up in regards to problems with Tulsi Gabbard. But, you know, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully lessons are learned in regards to fan, like being fans of politicians. It doesn't make sense doesn't make sense as far as like in regards to being efficient for trying to get some sort of ideas spread out through the world or being practiced in the world being a fan does not it doesn't work in that realm at all right be a fucking Knicks fan or something or a Lakers fan a fucking <laughs> or whatever be a Braves fan definitely be a Braves fan do it do it now I'm a Braves fan that a right Atlanta, baby. But don't be a fucking fan of a politician or a thought leader or whatever the fuck. You should, that shouldn't even happen in the realms of fucking spirituality. There's no room for fanboying there either. Seriously. Like, don't become a fan of that type of shit. Actually, you're allowed only one fan, like I have. I have one fan. I have one only fan. All right, that's it for me. Please subscribe if you feel like. Comment, agree, disagree. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to share, support, hopefully donate to all the links in the description box. Do it. Check them out. Especially OCBs. It's just sitting right there at the top. Please, give it a good, give it a good gander. I beg you. <laughs> and if you don't have money, just fucking share them somewhere. Say, hey, I like this content creator. Or I... I, I uh, I've been paying attention to this cause or whatever, and just fucking share the link. No big deal. You tell me, I might even retweet it. You never know. <laughs> all right. And with all that said, give this video a thumbs down. Say you want to get him.